once again, welcome everybody onto this session. Um, it wasn't planned out, so um, I'm sorry if everybody on the call is being caught out. I was just um, I was just thinking, yeah, we should do something for the team. Yeah, we should just do something to recap what I've been talking about recently. Luckily for me, I've had a very, very courageous um, student of mine who is very interested and very passionate about giving just like I am. So today, I'm just going to have to open up and give him the opportunity to exhibit what he's really got. I don't want to say I taught him because he's way better than me. Um, you're probably going to learn a lot more from him than what I probably teach. But I still want you to... I still want you to stay tuned, pay attention to what he's saying. If you've got any question at all, put in the chat box. I will be going through the chat box and um, I'll put the question to him. If it is something I need to jump in, I will jump in and do it. But overall, what we intend to do today is just look at some higher time frame perspective of the market from DXY, the dollar currency, down to some few pairs that people are interested in. I'll take over some point and then go over some few. I know there is um, one guy on this call who is very good on gold as well. So he would also uh, mark up some gold charts for us. And then um, we will finish up today. If you're excited for the rest of the session, can I have some fives in the chat box? All right, all right, all right, okay. Without saying much, I am just going to give this guy the host, and then, yeah, he will, run, he will run us through some of the few things he's got for us today. So, um, Desmond, I make you the host. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Coach Francis. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate this privilege because uh, Coach Francis has pointed so many of us to this course and direction that we are steering today. And we trust the Almighty God to keep pushing because in this industry, there is nothing like uh, I've gotten there. You know, it's, a, it's an industry that has to do with continuous learning. So, sir, I want to say thank you, sir. It's a, it's a, it's a privilege indeed. I'm just going to be a tool to explain the lit you have, have learned. And I just hope that uh, someone get value from this. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so, so much, sir. I'm grateful, sir. You're very Good morning, welcome. everyone. Good morning, everyone, once more. So I will just hop on my chat. And uh, my approach to trading smart money concepts because I, I, before now, that was as of last year when I contacted Coach Francis, I never really know what was smart money concepts. You know, I've been in the retail world, support and resistance, until I begin to see that. I, 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 do, I came across Coach Francis, it was through one of his YouTube videos or my search for knowledge. <laughs> so I came back, I was like, wow, <laughs> the way he trades is so, it's so different. And this, you know, you, you could have stayed years in doing this and not have the level of knowledge some persons who had the right information have. It's one thing I came to understand about this industry. You know, accurate knowledge is to actually freeze anyone and bring anyone into that realm of consistency. So I will just be sharing my approaches to pretty smart money concept. The things, I will share my confirmation checklist, the things that I need to see for me to say, okay, take this trade from here. So Coach Francis, if, if I'm unable to share my screen, I'll just start out immediately when you're done. Okay.
Can I share my screen? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. Some of you may be seeing some names of my chat. Don't don't be confused by those names. These are just uh, they are just terminology. Nothing really difficult. So, you know, one of the is that uh, this market rise and falls on basically two things. Number one is liquidity because the algorithm that manipulate price, the algorithm that. Uh, 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 bring out all these things that you see on your chat was actually designed by human beings like you and I. So, and they have a way that they are programming this algorithm to think in a way that is exceptional. Are you getting it now? So that's the reason why when we are trading smart money concept, we want to try to think how is the algorithm thinking? Like what was the intention when these guys were designed this algorithm? So that's what smart money is all about. And this algorithm was designed in a way that to, 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 to go to points where more people have their stop losses because that is liquidity for us. So two things that basically that I look for is the structure of the market and the liquidity in the market. Because without liquidity, nothing happens. Nothing happens in this industry. Without liquidity, nothing happens. So it is when liquidity is taken, that the market moves. Sometimes that's why when you set a trade, you're like, man, I set a buy, I, I was on the buy on this currency. It hit my stop loss, now it's going in my direction. I don't know, I believe all of us do have that experience. It's in my direction, it's going to my direction after hitting my stop loss. Yes, you've just been used, or your trade was just used as the liquidity to drive the price. That's what they do. So one of the things I've come to understand is always want to look at for the points where they have liquidity. And I don't want to trade in the direction where other British trader stop losses are. You, you see all this sentiment that we try to uh, uh, understand, court reports, uh, phone interest, so many of them. All these things are just trying to point you to the major direction that the institutions are placing their trades. And uh, if you understand the major parts the institution is taking her trade, you discover that things become much, much, much easier for you. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. If you hear me, okay, okay, okay. So, as I was saying, so what I do is that I look at structure, I look at liquidity, and I'll just explain the way I approach structure. I'm on MT4 because why I'm using MT4 is because uh, this is the price feed of my broker. So this is what I do. SH plus BN plus liquidity in this Maybe I can do like part of it and then any editorial stuff on your then. This is basically what I trade. I said the call to report hey, and money. Yeah, yeah. So then I said, I said, I'll just, I'll just can, you, can, some, can, can some of us move ourselves, please? I can hear a lot of yeah. echo on the background. Yeah. yeah. Like so so everybody can see, everybody, everybody can see, everybody can see this. SH, I BMS. Since Friday. Oh my God. Please, can we, can some of us mute ourselves? I'll just, just this is basically the same thing Coach Francis has taught us, and there's just no two words about it. Look at this. People want to take trade at this point, but me, I won't. The reason being that one, this was this was an accumulate an accumulation phase, and uh, we have people stop losses here, uh, retail traders, support our resistant traders. 
I just want to explain this in a very simple term that this is basically what I do. For me, I know that these are stop losses. Stop losses are here, stop losses are here. So they have to manipulate this, they create the first move. So I call this the AMD. AMD. The AMD approach. They need to accumulate to manipulate and distribute. So when the positions like this, retail traders are just jumping. They want to, because they've been taught, they also know that we do sell high and buy low. But they don't understand that we don't actually sell high and buy low. Instead, we sell higher and buy lower. There are two different things entirely. We sell higher and buy lower. So in this approach, when market is consolidating at this point, they are dropping in. But that's the time we have to sit on our hands because it's not just all about just pulling trades. It's all about pulling quality trades. Before now, I want to pull up, I want to pull up all the trades in the world. Like I'm done with, I'm done until New York session today. I don't know if I'll be trading until New York session today. And I have a key zone and I'll be explaining that. For this key zone, I when the volatility in the market is much. If you attend that trade Asia session, uh, uh, in my time, uh, you can convert that is in GMT, uh, GMT plus one. It is, the key zone is from 12 to 2, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. for London session, the key zone, that means if I don't pull a trade in the Asia session within this time, 12 to 2, I'm not taking any trades in the Asia session. Uh, I'm not meant to be rigid on this, but this is just because uh, 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 in this industry, it's all about flexibility. But this is just something that I've set out as a, a, a kind of a, uh, a confirmation bias if I'm taking my trades. It, it increases my confidence. Then in the London session, I, I want to take my trade within my London key zone. In my time in GMT plus one, it's from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. So I want to take my trade within this zone because this is when volatility comes into the market. Then in the New York section, I want to take my trade within the key zone as well. From the 11, from the 12.30 to the 2.30. So within this time, I want to take trades in the New York section. So if I miss the London session, it's the New York session. If I miss the Asia session, you don't have to be glued to your computer because at first, why we are trading? Because we want to obtain freedom. So as I was saying, so when, when I have liquidity, look at these things. Let me bring it down here. Is this all I trade? These guys, stop point, break of market structure, liquidity in this trap, invalidation. I'll tell you what that means, don't worry. Invalidation and return to origin. This return to origin, you have optimal trade entry. So now that I've seen this, I know that these guys need to manipulate this market. And look at what's happening. You know, this is a very strong support level. According to the retail traders, they already have their lines marked out. Now, this has broken their support level. That was what I saw yesterday on gold, actually, and I will show you. I saw this yesterday. I took that short buy. It was a short buy because gold in my over bias is still in the downtrend. Uh, and uh, it has to get to my uh, weekly demand zone for me to have a swing buy. I will explain that as well. So now they've broken this. The retailers are happy. Man, waiting for break. You know, once they do this, their stop loss is at most is going to be here. At most is going to be here. At most is going to be here. So we have it here. So we have it here. So we have it here. But at most is going to be here. So now breakout. So this was the A, this was the accumulation. The M, they've manipulated them out of the market. Now the D, they want to start distributing. That is when we are alert. And look at, one thing I've come to understand, if liquidity is not feed into your market, you don't need to take it. People are going to take this trade. Yes, good, you're going to make profit. Yes, good, if you know when to exit, no problem. Like at this point. But why am I not going to take a trade? I will tell you the reason. Because I see this as the liquidity inducement trap which is the LIT that I have here for this supposed buy move. I told you before, just quality trades. And most of the time, they may just come either engineer liquidity here, engineer liquidity here, or probably go above it to engineer liquidity or just create 
the London low, they come down Basically, what I do, what do I want to see? A monitoring momentum because the, the time it takes this to move, I'm monitoring the momentum. Now, the time is taking it to come down, I'm also checking the momentum. I just want this guy to come and take away my liquidity. Like now, now they've induced these guys to buy. I wasn't buying. If I'm even going to buy, I know what my target TP should be. It's always at this high. Because this is not the major move I was waiting for. And if it doesn't come, so be it. So be it. So be it. Because the aim is to be consistently profitable. And one thing I've also come to understand, this ideology that we always want to have, two pip SL, one pip SL. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. But for me, you want to have one pip SL, 1.5 pip SL, you lose six trades, then you make four. You lose seven trades, then you make three. And if you look at the reason why you're losing these trades, maybe it's just because of an additional three pips, an additional two pip. So even when I do have two pip SL, for my currency in pairs, it's five to 10 pips. For my gold trade, it's less than 30 pips as my SL. So even though I'm going to have two pip SL, I'll make it five, make it 10. That was the same thing I did yesterday in gold. I would have got smashed out. People saw what I posted on the gold. So now this is the kind of move I want to take. It satisfies everything for me. And let's not forget, this manipulation will always come into a demand zone. You look at your left. You look at your left. It will always come into a demand zone. You look at your left. So when it's in your demand zone, you have much confluence to hold this position because now you are now also having liquidity, trendline liquidity. So we have every reason now, this is my kind of trade. And it happens every time. It is just I draw this like this. Just another example here. That's nice first case scenario. Just watch. The stop point. Now I'm conscious of the momentum. Now I am ready to take this trade because I've seen everything I need to see. Number one was I need to have a stop point. It's very necessary. I need to see that these guys have stop pointed some guys. Like they've taken majority out of the market, which is this first thing I'm seeing here. Which is this first thing I'm seeing here. Stop point SH here. Now it has broken market structure. Now I want it to feed in liquidity. I want to see liquidity. If I don't see liquidity, there is no need. I have it, but these are the six pairs I monitor up there. So I will definitely get a trade. I will definitely get it, just high quality trades only. But I want to see this happening. When I take this trade, I call it my, and when for any reason it's SL, I'm not mad at myself. <laughs> I'm not at all. Because when I've calculated my risk, before going into this trade, and now it hits my head L. That means that was a lesson. I will just write down. You can see my notes here. Those of you that can see, I have my notes here. 
I'm just right. I want to know why this hit SL. Why? And I don't know. I always find that why it hit my SL. So there are different models. So this invalidation point is. Let me just make you understand this invalidation point. It's an additional confidence for me because we have come to understand what the algorithm does. It most of the time comes like this was formation of lower lows and lower highs. Lower lows before it breaks structure here. Before we had a break of structure at this point. Don't mind me, I'm not really a good teacher like our coach, but I'm just trying to explain as much as I can. So as long as I've seen the break of structure, this aggressive move. And now look at, this was the last lower low. So the uh, last but one lower low before this, the previous lower low before this. So uh, the algorithm is designed in a way that price most of the time, 90% of the time, for price to retrace, price will always come to this point. And I will show you, thus, I, I, I swing trade by the reason of having invalidation points. I swing trade, I repeat that, by the reason of having invalidation points. And I will show you that on the chart. Look at it. I'm using my trading view because I just like to use my broker's view because trading view is not my broker's view. I can't use trading view anyways. So this is a validation point. I want to see at 90% of the time, price comes in before it reverses. Look at it. It will come. It will come. Majority of the times. And one sweet thing is that you see this point, price will always close above it. You just weak. That is why I always switch to line chart. Whenever I'm analyzing structure, I always switch to line charts. So... I want to see stop hunt. I want to see break of market structure. I want to see liquidity. If possible, if I see invalidation, it's giving me some ideology to swing. I want to see it return back to origin. Then how do I approach structure? The way I approach structure, this is basically how I trade. If you invert this, we have the buy set up. This, this, this is just the basic concept, it's basic concept, smart money. But now I ensure that liquidity is feed into it. Yes, we all know break of market structure. Yes, we all know it has to come back to origin. But do we really put into consideration the point that you say that uh, you had a break of market structure? What did that point do? Did it take out people's stop losses? If it doesn't, I, I, don't, I don't even look at it. I don't. I don't look at it. There's no need for it. Like this, for example. Let me show you something, guys. Can I clean all this? Do we understand, do we understand what I'm saying so far? Can you wait for a minute? If anybody wants to take a screenshot of the screen at least, do that now before he cleans it up. Okay. Let me just come to this point now. This is gold. This is a, a EU. So if I look at the swing trade that was called. <laughs> you see, you see, this was forming a higher highs. Like this was higher, uh, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher. Let's not forget this is a, uh, what time frame is this? And this is my daily time frame. So one candle is a day. So higher highs, higher lows. Higher highs, higher lows. Higher highs, higher lows. To get to this point. If you notice it, and all, you see all this move, all this move. For me, this was just my last, this place I put my, red, my black line. This was my last higher low before it got broken by this. So this was my last but one higher low before this one was formed like this let me mark it out here with just invalidation point you no mass business uh, keep it simple this was my last higher low because if you go to the weekly it, it, it shows it's clearer than and these guys here these guys here why did i choose this as my last higher low because look at there's an aggressive break of structure, very aggressive break of structure. Was there any stop point? Yes, there was. Stop point. Look at the guy. Stop point. My last higher look. So I want price to at least come to this invalidation point for me to find my entry. And it is sweeter. You correlate your invalidation point with an other block that you have been taught. Because I know that the algorithm is designed to ensure that price come 90% of the time. You could have just swing this position from here and hold it with confidence. When you now see a shift of market structure here, 
you would have accepted that trade. And there's another, it's just the way it, it is when you're taking a buy trade. That's the way it is when you're taking a sell trade. How? You see this guy, this, this guy here, this was the last, the last but one higher high before this guy, isn't it? This candle, this candle before this guy. So automatically, I have my invalidation point here. Swing trading here, here. I don't mind my diagram. I don't mind my diagram here. Sorry. Here. Here. Did it break structure? Of course it does. Look at it. Look at structure. Of course. Was there a stop point? Of course, it did. Look at it. It did. Now, a break structure. I have my validation point. Trust me, guys. There was an OB resting alongside my validation point. This would be a swing trade for me. Holding it with confidence. You know why we hold this trade with confidence? Having here this previous validation point as my TP. Because... Year was a very year was a strong low. I will tell you what that means. That's how I approach structure as well. Year was a strong low. What is a strong low? A strong low is a low that causes manipulation. This was a manipulation. Two capital stop losses, stop hunts. A strong low is a low after taking out people stop losses after causing manipulation. It breaks market structure. That means two things about a strong low. A strong low is a low that causes manipulation. This was a strong low. One of the ways I know that a, stru a structural point was a strong low. Why is it a strong low? It causes manipulation. Why? It takes up people's stop losses. Why is it a strong low? It breaks market structure. So what am I waiting for? For price to return to origin for me to buy. That's exactly what has happened. So I don't take a trade from a weak low or a weak high. And I'll explain what that means. Look at this time being a strong loan, our price just need to return into it and move to break this structure. But from what we could observe from structural point of view, this higher time frame intentions anyway, we discovered that price came to this point of invalidation we have marked at, look at it, I already had it marked at before this call. Came to the point of invalidation and started going down. Gave us another invalidation point here again. So we know that, oh, this, market structure has shifted. And if you go to the monthly time frame, you will see what is happening, that this guy in the bigger picture is in the down, in the bigger picture. Because how do you correlate structure? The lower time frame, when they hit the higher time frame pressure, they bow. So even though my, higher, my lower time frame is for me higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, that is just a retracement of the larger time frame. It was very difficult for me to understand this. But at the end of the day, thank God I got it. If the higher time frame, for example, and this is the same thing Coach Francis keeps teaching every time, every time, every time. Thank God for the Spirit of God. This was not because this mode was smart, just because Supreme Being opened my eyes to see. Look at this was what the higher time frame is. My higher time frame intention. To so me now, look at something here, guys. Sorry. Look at it. This is now a strong. Low, higher time frame intention, higher time frame intention. Why is it a strong low, guys? Because as I said before, it causes a manipulation. Look at the manipulation. Take up people's stop losses. Now it has break market structure. It's broken market structure. Just repeat the same thing again. Broke market structure. Now I want price to feed in liquidity. Liquidity can just be like this, feeding liquidity. Once I already have that, whenever I say liquidity, you know, you've been taught that we have buy, sell, and sell side liquidity, then I want to, I want to do this. Sell side liquidity can be previous day low, previous week low, previous month low, previous uh, previous equal low, equal low, previous uh, triple bottom, previous swing low, previous Asia low that was not taken. All these are liquidity. 
So now I have this in a higher time frame intention. By the time it's now pulling back, do you know that if you go to a smaller time frame, when this trade was pulling back from here, 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 guys, here, you'll be seeing series of multiple lower low and lower high, lower low and lower high, lower low and lower high, lower low and lower high. And the problem is that we, we focus more on lower time frame and forget the higher time frame intentions. And whenever we do that, our hand gets burnt because we've forgotten it. And lower time frame is so enticing that you want to have two pip SL. You want to have, I started off like that. I want to only have two pip SL. I want to have the, I want to have the lowest, highest risk reward. No. So you want to keep, you want to keep up consistency. Don't your two people, your three people. If you have it good, if you're having it good, I'm not against it. But I think the main thing here is consistency. So this is basically, so when this is happening in, Lower time frame, trust me, guys. I'm going to make me forget this guy. Let me take this out so you don't get confused. Let me take this out. Let me take this out. When this is happening in my in my higher time frame, higher time frame intentions, let's not forget that we already have a demand zone marked out here. So I'm not going to get confused when lower time frame is just when lower time frame is busy doing this that he's doing doing this. You know what I'm waiting for to know that because you you will not you cannot know. When higher time frame has got into its demand zone, it is the lower time frame that has showed you. And this is something that I want you to write down. Whenever you are jumping time frame, you don't jump from four hours to 15 minutes. That's wrong. If the algorithm is not designed like that, let it be a step lower. If you are jumping from four hours, go to two hours, go to one hour. This is time frame correlation. Four hour, then two hour, then one hour. Okay, one hour, then 30 minutes, then 15 minutes. One month, then one week, then four, one day. One day, then four hours, then one hour. You don't just look at your chart one day. The next thing you go to your 15 minutes. What are, what are you doing? I don't understand. I was doing that before as well. But that is not how the algorithm is designed. This is what I tell, before I put it, I ask myself, what are the retail traders doing? What would the algorithm be doing at this point? What is it trying to do? When, I'm, when I satisfy my questions, I'm ready to pull a trail without emotions. Because this business, this industry is a business. This business doesn't, doesn't give a damn to your emotions. It's even love hurting people the more. So now I have this budget time frame perspective in mind that price is coming down. And before this start happening, my lower time frame must have given this. I must have had this in my lower time frame. Maybe. My lower time frame, this was my lower time frame before that. Lower, uh, lower, low, lower, I started from it. was my lower time frame intentions. But now, shift of market structure, I know that, oh, something is happening. And there are two ways you recognize shift of market structure. This is my number two way I recognize shift of market structure. Now, this high is formed in higher time frame. Higher time frame is now weakening at this point. Lower time frame is busy shifting momentum. Now, I see a break of structure. So, oh, lower time frame is super. So, this is the point that my higher time frame will start forming higher low. So this higher low, now we can take advantage of it, but it will not make us to forget that now we are now in an uptrend in the higher time frame intentions. And how will I know that I've got into a demand zone where I want to buy, to hold for a swing? It's when my lower time frame now has a break of structure to the upside. I'm not going to jump into this. No, I'm going to be patient. And trust me, it's good. this particular point where we have a break of market structure, it's going to also be an invalidation point at the right side, sorry, at the left side. It's going to be a point, very strong demand zone, which we already see in the higher time frame at that OB that you marked out, at that breakout block that you marked out, at that imbalance that you marked out. I don't trade imbalances and I will tell you why. At that imbalances that you marked out. So when I have this break of structure, Look at me, guys. I want to be conservative because nobody knows. Now, this trend, if those that are joining trend line, they have just taken out these guys. For me, I want another trade to continue. See, guys, you know when this price returns to this point, I'm mostly taking a trade. That's after, don't forget our normal inducing liquidity and the rest, which is this guy. You know, it can go break structure and return. That's two ways. They come. Trust me, guys, I'm not going to take this trade. Do you know why? The higher time frame, and now we've come to understand that this is the 
higher low of the higher time frame. Now, having been satisfied, I want to start trades from this zone now. Because when, it, when, when the market is trending, three things happen. Impulsive move, corrective move or liquidation move, the another impulsive move, continuation move. That's what I mean is that impulsive liquidation, sorry, pullback is same thing with liquidation anyway. Pullback, then continuation. Those are the three things your trend always do. There is no other thing. If it is up, if it is up trend or downtrend, or it's consolidating. So when I see this now, now I'm not satisfied that, oh, indeed, this is my higher low. This is my higher low of my higher time frame retention. Then I'm ready to swing. And definitely, TP target, we already have it. Everything is set. And trust me, you know, when this guy, he's going in the higher time frame intentions, we are still going to have the same thing repeated again. Price we in this liquidity. I want to see liquidity inducement. This is your breaker. I don't trade breaker. I don't. I just trade my OBs. Don't trade breaker. So I've seen this. Okay, so okay, this is an inducement. If it doesn't come back, I look for another. It's simple. I'm looking for this. Now, they've stomped onto these people. Now, I'm satisfied. Okay, oh, they're taking that, these guys out of the market. Now, I'm ready to buy. And when I take this buy, guys, trust me, I'm holding it. When it breaks structure, I've just closed. Sometimes you see me outside, I've closed the 50% volume. Where I close in volumes in higher percentage when I'm in a short term buy or short term sell. So I want to close in volume when it breaks. can return back to origin, optimal trade tree. I want to take another trade. Add to, I add to it. But I know that at this point in time, I'm risk free. I've closed in all the, all the supposed the amounts that my stop losses, you know what I'm talking about, is trade management. Let me not speak so much grammar. So now I've seen everything satisfied. How? Look at it, guys. We also repeat the same thing, stop hunt. Is here now, is it, does here satisfy our strong high? I'm asking all these guys. Does it satisfy our strong low, sorry? Is a strong low, right? Yes, it's a strong low. Why? It causes manipulation. Secondly, it breaks market structure. Wow. Thirdly, it induces liquidity. Now, it came to my point of origin. We are in this guys we are here we are here and if you look at it it's correlated with my invalidation point as well i always want to have my trade at the invalidation point i have my last uh, uh lower low or higher high that caused that break of market structure this is simply sir francis this is simply what your boy trades like i i i i went on a search on why do price always hit my SL before it moves? And I came across liquidity inducement theory. I begin to study it. I'm still studying it. I'm not yet a pro. I'm still studying it. But the truth is that, guys, truth be told, it's getting better. It's getting better. So this is simply what I do. This is simply what I trade. This is simply what I trade. This is the concept behind all the trades. And let me tell, let me quickly make an example of the gold. <laughs> you see where my sell intention is in this gold. I've explained how I trade. Hope everybody got this. I don't, I don't know. Hope everybody got this. I don't know if I'm, if I'm still behind. Please put a one on the chat box if you get it. Put a one on the chat box. Put a one on the chat box, please, if you get all I've explained. Am I still being hard? Hello? Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Okay, that's it, that's it, guys. That's it, guys. So this is basically how I trade. And do you know one sweet part of this? Do you know this impulsive move? This is where my court report comes in. Look at it, guys. Let me show you something in my folder. You can be doing the same. What do you see here in this folder? Court reports and forest factory news. That news that San Francis went to to check. I normally have a screenshot. What do news do for us? News help us to 
create liquidity, stop hunt, and we take a trade. That's what that's the only thing we use it for. Everything you see in forest factory. See, everything I see in court gives me a bigger picture. Everything I see in forest factory gives me an overview for these retail traders, and it brings it brings price into my entry. Before now, I was so scared of NFP, but not anymore, guys. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Because I know that NFP is going to cause manipulation by stop hunting. It's going to break structure. Price is going to return to origin. Then I take the trade. That's basically what I do. So now this was what was behind my go trade this morning. First of all, uh, look at the bigger picture. I don't know why my... Is. Okay, I can move it. Good. Look at something, guys. Always check your higher time frame perspective. You won't, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Do you know that? See, guys, see, this was the last press already forming this impulsive move to the upside. Now got broken. What was that? Stop hunting, manipulation, because people were busy now selling. I've forgotten the higher time frame intentions. They've forgotten. They easily forget. That's one sweet part. They easily forget. And we want them to always forget so that we can take advantage of it. Now, we have our TP here, guys. Look at what happened. <laughs> this, just simply trading the validation points is, is, if you want to be a swing trade, guys, invalidation will be your thing. Right, just simply trading the validation point. But I love incorporating everything because I'm trying to build a strategy. By the grace of God, when I begin to, when I continue to see consistency in this strategy, in combination of this, I, I don't own smart money, I don't own validation, but I'm trying to combine these things because smart SMC plus LIT plus IVN, which is smart money concept plus liquidity inducement trap plus invalidation. These are the three strategies I'm combining as one, guys. So look at it, just by simply identifying this last, last. Low and low. Why is it a low and low? It broke structure. It broke structure. Switch to the line chart. You see it there. Look at it. Broke structure, guys. Broke structure. Broke structure. Now look at it, guys. Broke structure to the downside from the low and low. Broke structure to the upside. <laughs> what does that mean? We are selling the uh, 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 buyers. So people will be waiting to look at it, to buy from here and trust the market. The market will always give you what you want. But we already know. We don't fall off such free again. This was a short buy. You know, so it is a weakling time frame. Yes, it is good. But you know that this short buy you had here came to this invalidation point we have in lower time frame for this sale. That's the story for another day, guys. So I was not going to, in any form, start buying from here. Because I've not really seen manipulation. Because if I check the weeks now, I'm still in a structure that has broken straight to the downside. I'm still having so much liquidity here. But when this now happened, and um, break structure down to the upside, price this evaluation point. And look at it. Look at this swing move. What is this calling? Price addition to this to that. Price addition to that point. So for larger time frame perspective of the monthly, look at it, guys. Gold is in the uptrend. Higher time frame perspective. And look at it, guys. Do you see these equal lows we are having here? It's not by mistake, it was an engineered liquidity. Gold will still come down. So I'm not forgetting my higher time frame intentions. And it is now even clearer in the weekly time frame that yes, price is actually in the uptrend. This is my demand zone that I have in the weekly time frame. This is my, this is my demand zone. Look at it. Look at so much liquidity here, guys. Look at so much liquidity here. If you're the type that trade breaker, though I don't, but I need I know the reason why price bounced from this point. This was your breaker. This was your breaker. I can tell that, but I don't trade breaker. Let me just go straight to, because I've already explained how I trade. Let me just go straight. I'm just doing a kind of a general. There's any question you can ask, but let me just go straight to why I took the trade I took this morning. And actually, I've been looking at that trade since last week. You see this wholesale? Guys, this wholesale, I took this wholesale. I think I posted it. I think I posted it. I took this wholesale. This wholesale. This wholesale, I took it. And look at the reason why I took the trade I took this morning. I know there was still some unaccounted orders in this place. Price still needs to come here. And for price to come there, price needs to move from where it is because price was here when the market opened. Price needs to move from where it is up to this point. And I need to take advantage of that. Guys, look at, 
I had my concept again, a strong low, a strong low. Why is it a strong low? I'll tell you. Look at it. It causes manipulation. I was more interested in this swing, in this old low, a string low, causes manipulation. You can choose to draw it like this, whatever you want, no problem. But I prefer this. Can be neat. Look, it breaks structure. It breaks what? Structure. My, my structural break eh, is actually from body to body. I don't do this because of what my, what this my friend here tells me. But it's good, just for it to be neat. You can always put it at, at your week, no problem, no problem. But I just don't want to be confused. I look at something else, guys. Look at something else, guys. These guys induce liquidity, liquid, liquidity, which was the previous day low PDF. So I was just waiting for price to come to 50%. Of this postal candle. Don't forget, I talked to you about invalidation. Where is my invalidation now? This should be this guy that was here, right? Right? Because we go to lower time for perspective, you will see it there. And look at it, guys. Do you notice the correlation of the invalidation with the other block? And I come to that point. I told you before that 90% of the time, price do. And trust me, I have my trade here. And I have my SL here. Not even here. Because it is gold. I have my SL here. You can go back to check my, sorry, my SL here. You can go back to my trade. Uh, I put in the group and check. I have my SL here. Yeah. Who cares about two pick stop loss? I don't. I don't care. I just care about the consistency. Because if you are, do you know that you're getting just one to five? One to five. Trust me, guys. You are a millionaire in dollar in a few years to come. This is a process of, this is a process of wealth building, not get rich quick scheme. There's a video uploaded on my status yesterday uh, uh, by Falcon. It was like, Scaling up to scaling up. He said, you can be in this industry for years. You're not making a dime. You are busy scaling up. You are busy scaling up. In the shortest period of time, the money starts coming in. And by this time you are scaled up, you just cannot go back to where you are coming from. The money now starts coming. This is what I did this morning. I saw my requirements met. Do you know that? Do you know that? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me give you a shocker here, guys. Do you know that when this price, I took this trade here. If you look at it, at first, Screenshot I posted, it was just two trades, right? I took one here, when it's already got me triggered, I took another one here. Then I now switched to my retail, I have a retail dashboard, guys. Let me show you my retail dashboard. One of the things I use in checking what a retail trader is doing now, let me show you. I have a retail dashboard, look at my retail dashboard. Um, support and resistance, LA advance. Look at it. <laughs> well, I say, wow, this is sweet, this is sweet. Now the retail traders have seen their support level broken. I said, wow, now they are ready to move the price on these guys. And I took another trade here. <laughs> I took another trade here. I have all my TPs in these highs. In this case, I know that I have my uh, 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 demand zone here. I have my TP here. Here. Just here, at this point. I have my TP here. And it got smashed. And I also posted it. So, <laughs> Coach Francis, this is basically what your boy do. So, if there's any question anybody can ask, I don't know if I've added value, but I, I don't, I don't teach, I, I don't teach as my boss. But you know, a student most of the time is, is not always as uh, eloquent and efficient as his teacher. But the joy in it is that when a student takes his work seriously, the teacher become proud of him. So, guys. This is how I do what I do, simple, easy. But trust me, don't be deceived. You have to put in the work for so it to make it easy. Thank you, sir, Coach Francis. I'm done, sir. I'm done. There's any question anybody can ask. I'm definitely blown away. I don't know if anybody else is on the call. Seriously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. What do you guys want to say to him? Anything in the chat box, like seriously, I'm, I'm surprised myself <laughs> because um, some of the things he's talking about, I didn't teach him. I'm being honest, I didn't teach him. Well, every jargon he's using is a thing that I've told. I told him about it, but the way he's he's put things together, mashed things together to create his own thing. It's his. It's not mine. I'm not taking credit for it. 
And these are some of the things that, guys, I do talk about. You know, um, I can teach you everything, but you need to be yourself. I can give you everything that I do, but you need to become your real self. See, this this guy's just found himself. Then for then for the for the court reports, if we guys can hear me, uh, uh, I found the court point. Let me go to my. Let me just quickly show you where I use my court reports. Is anybody interested in that information, please? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, sir. Because we uh, the, the court report that San Anthony taught us the last time I was in that meeting. I was in that meeting. He's been a wonderful guy. He also puts me through. Thank you, Sir Anthony, if you're in this call. He also puts me through more on how the court report works because that was a, 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 that was something that I needed. So we did a Zoom. And then I was still in Nigeria. I didn't even know that he was my brother from another mother. <laughs> so, but because I don't have access to uh, his, uh, his, uh, his education, the educational platform, so I couldn't access it actually. So I just find a, a website I could not access court report. It's called Bar Chat because the one that he uses is a paid version. If you are a student of that institution, you can have access to it. But I was able to find out a way to make it simple and easy for my. And that's what is at this Bar Chat. You find your court report in Bar Chat. You also have your CFTC, but I feel Bar Chat just make it much easier. Bar Chat just make it much easier. Uh, CFTC is there. CFTC.gov. Those are the two websites that you have your court reports, uh, and I will open both of them. Then at this point, you go to your features. If you go to your features, you see commitment of traders here. If you go to commitment of traders, though the one I normally save is the one of CFTC. That is actually far much better, but this one is easier for you to understand. So when I go, going to gold, this means I just click on gold, gold GC. It's going to gold. It's going to gold. So I want to know the consistency of what uh institution is doing if you go to this chart you're only going to focus on your see you see this thing that is moving on my chart you're only going to focus on the c-o-t-l-c c-o-t-l-c-c c-o-t-l-c not c-o-t-l-c-x not c-o-t-l-c-l not c-o-t-l-c-p no, L C S M and O, but C O T L C C because that C at the end of the day is talking about the commitment of traders. So what I do is I just try to check what has been the consistency, just as uh, Anthony taught us before now. What is the consistency of the institutional guys? And one thing I love about this, one thing I love about this site is that they normally put the dates in as much as it's on Monday, but it's consistent. It's consistent. Just save you the stress of going to uh, cftc.gov to start analyzing. So look at it now. You see, the last one was on the August of 23, of which we know that this see, this report actually submitted to the uh, uh, United States uh, Bureau of Statistics uh, on Tuesday, but they released it on, on Friday. Why did they do that? They demanded the institution to submit all their positions so that they don't have a room to manipulate the market. But trust me, they still do. How many persons understand how it's been used? So this this guy so this is guys giving you an expo because these guys don't have stop losses. We are the one that have stop losses. This guy can choose to hold the trade for for as long as three years. They have the money you don't. They are the ways you are the remora you are the remora fish that is attached to the shark. So now I want to look at the COTC LC. You can see I have minus two hundred fourteen thousand there. So I will write it down as of uh, August twenty three, which is the last one that was released. It is minus two one two one two one four zero zero. Then we'll go back again. After the 23, the next one was what? On the 16. Look at on the 16. It was two, two, four, five, eight. Are you seeing it, guys? Four, five, eight. What does that mean? It means that because you the more the higher you go, you're just tensing of it. And for what we are seeing in the that the court report is increasing. I get it now. The court report is increasing. Guys, when it is increasing, when price is increasing, it means that on our chart, price action is decreasing. I 
I don't know if I'm making sense, guys. The way this particular one works, so the way this particular side works, you can also make your research on it on court, the way I use it. Are you getting it now? Because now we are having from, uh, sorry, sorry, guys, from 20, from uh, 22, from 20, this nine, sorry, this nine. I just tried to look at two weeks back. From uh, on the 23, we have a, uh, uh, minus two one four zero zero zero. Now on the sixteen, we are having same minus one four zero zero zero. Then on the nine, we are having minus two minus one nine. I know that minus one nine minus one nine five is greater than minus two one four, right, guys? It's greater than minus two one four. So automatically, what this means is that this price here is decreasing, sorry, is decreasing. Like the price we have here is decreasing. Then on your chart, it will be increasing. Are you getting it now? It will be increasing. So when I get an overall picture of these guys, they are will now go to my cftc.gov. I believe everybody knows that already. My cftc.gov, cftc. Since you don't have access to what Sir Anthony have access to, these are a managed to create that access. When I've seen the overall picture, I will now begin to see which position are they adding, which position are they removing. I go to commitment of traders here, go to uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, go to the short format of Chicago Mercantile Exchange. This has been taught many a time. Then I just, I just go to check Let, let me just use a random example here. Let's say this Canadian dollar. Yeah, this Canadian dollar. So friends have explained this before. It's the same thing. See, we have long position, short position, more long position, uh, uh, lesser short position. When I look at what they are adding and what they are removing, this is what you should be basing more of your decisions on. Yes, someone has said that cut increases short price decreases. Yes, on, yes, 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 yes. On that... Uh, uh, that black bar, bar chart I showed you. Yes, yes, you're right, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Then on, we're coming to that, coming to TFTC now, you now have to use wisdom. This is where your analysis comes in now. You want to say, okay, now, dollar card. Because USD is the base currency, so whatever you're analyzing, it will be the reverse. Now they are adding more short position. They are adding more short position. You know, on a normal, if you are trading USD card, you want to long USD because they are shorting, because there is more short on card. But in this context, it becomes the reverse. So, so I'm done. That's just all. That's just all that I do. Thank you, Sir Francis, for this privilege. It was really an honor to give back to the family I came from. Thank you so much, sir. You're very welcome, mate. Bye. I don't know if anybody have a question. If you have a question, please unmute yourself and ask. Yeah. Yes, I use cut. I use cut. Someone just asked a question. He said, Do you use cut along with your technical analysis to find entries? Yes, I do that. My cut report gives me an overview of the bigger picture perspective so that I will know where my supply demand zone is in the bigger perspective and know how to also play the intraday play ping pong. Yes, yes. It's just an additional confluence. It's not a strategy by itself, it's just an additional confluence for you. It does not mean that you just go to your court reports when the market is decision and shorting. Don't, don't forget that decision does not just short. No, decision they are shorting and they are longing at the same time. But now you want to be on the major moves where they have more positions as your swing position 
and be counter trading their short positions when you see these ingredients I've talked about before now. That's just how it's used. That is how I use it. Let me not do it. There's no general assumption in this industry. That is how I use it. Okay, someone said, which time frame do I use most for entries? That's a good question. For me, anyways, I actually love the 15 minutes, 30 minutes. You see all this one minute? When I get to some level of proficiency, I'll start using one minute. For now, no. Because there's so much noise there. You can do you know that you can be using 30 minutes entry. You'll be hitting most of your trade. Maybe the worst that happens is that you are now having 10 pip SL, 8 pip SL, because you're talking about one candle here. You understand? 15 minutes is good. 30 minutes is cool. I don't know when last I used one minute or five minutes. I can't remember. It is when traders left me. I'm looking for an inch. I cannot go to five minutes. That's for that, sir. Thanks for that question. And is the thing is, it's about being right. It's not about, it's not about getting your stop loss hit. That's what exactly, people have sir. to know. A big loss, a small loss is still a loss. Exactly. Exactly, sir. Somebody said, do you mark daily and four hour? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. This is what I do. I have the, I have my higher time frame. I have my intermediate time frame. And I have my entry time frame. And it will, it will shock you that I don't take entries in my four hours, one day and one week. These are my higher time frames that I use in analyzing structures. My entry time frame is from one hour below, one hour to 15 minutes. Who are busy analyzing at the one hour to go pull the trigger at the one minute? I'm not going to do that. The reason being that you know, life is a stage and is in process. When I get to that level of efficiency, I will start doing it. But for now, this is going well. I will just keep perfecting because the same thing, price is fractal. The same thing that is happening in the one hour is actually what is happening in the one minute. But you have to train your eyes to be able to see it. So as it, at, at this stage of my trading, I was telling Coach Francis yesterday that for the main time, you know, you have to pay the price for what you want. I, I run a business. I, I run a company. And I'm my penultimate year in medical school, 500 level. But I just deferred my admission. That was about a few months, about two months ago to strictly pursue this kid and return back to medical college. I think that's a, a huge sacrifice. That's a very big sacrifice. But when my mates, we all graduate as doctors. I was supposed to graduate with them next year, but I'm going to come back where they are, allowed, where they are all because I went to pursue forest career. It does not make sense, but it makes sense to me. Everybody knows what they want from life. So it's all about giving it your time. No matter what I explain here, this was the same thing that Francis was telling us. Like I remember myself, and uh, my very good friend, uh, Felix, that he will teach us all what he knows, but if we don't put in the works, he's done what he can do. So yes, mark your daily time frame so that you will know where you are trading from zones. And someone is asking me, how do I get my retail this thing? It is on the internet, it's free on the internet. I can send it to the group as well. It just show me where retail trader is, you know? Just look at everything that is happening. Have you not observed that whenever this guy got broken, Look at it, it got broken and it go up. Now it got broken again, because I know it is not yet time for this guy to break it and keep going down. When that time comes, we also know. Those are just the confidence, guys. All right, so um, Des, if you've got some time, can you pick a pair, yeah? One of the pairs okay. that you trade and do a okay. top-down analysis to give people the perspective of what you look at on a higher time frame and where okay. you'd be looking at entering, at least to give them um, an idea of what you really do. Okay, sir, I'll do that right away. Now you have broken down the concept of what you do. So if I have an empty chart, how do I apply the concept that you have just showed me? If okay. what I'm saying makes sense. Okay, no problem, it does, it does, it does. Okay. So if I look at the weekly time frame, I want to see my weekly perspective. I want to see my weekly perspective. And from what I can see here in my weekly perspective, now this guy is now a strong high. Why is he a strong high? I told you a strong guy is a high that causes manipulation. Structure. And it's even sweeter because most of the times it just goes into 
the supply demand zone, and I'll show you that as well. Now, this my SH. You can all agree with me, guys, that this was where we had this is our last uh, 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 we had a break of market structure at this point. Don't agree with me on that. If you don't agree, say you don't agree. Uh, uh, but this is what I see. Yeah. So automatically, nothing is by mistake in this industry. You see, guys. No, I know that. Okay, good. I am indeed in a supply zone, and I have a stop point. What's the next thing I want to see? Don't forget, this is daily time frame, guys. Just one candle means a lot. There's a break of structure here. The break of structure here. Though the major break of structure, don't take your eyes off it, is this guy. This will make us say that place is a strong, a strong uh, high. Now I have this now. And why this price is actually rejecting here was because it was rejecting from a very strong supply demand zone. Why did I mark this? I'll tell you. Did it cause manipulation? Yes, it did. Stop on. Previous weekly load took it out. Did it break structure? Yes, of course, it did. It broke structure. I had time for perspective. I want to know where I am. It broke structure. So in a nutshell, this guy was meant to be taken out. But now that he didn't and it's come to take this out, it's obvious that now we are moving with the exception because the monthly is forming a higher uh, 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 low. I guess that the monthly is forming a higher low because you, you can see uh, money transfer. I believe Coach France has taught us that many times. There was money transfer here. How do I know? Look at it. It's clear. We had a stop point here. We have a break of market structure here. We have a liquidity inducement, of course we do. Look at it here. Liquidity inducement crap here. Which is this guy. Come on, I draw it to that extreme just to get clarity. You can see it here, guys. Break stop hunt, break of market structure, induce liquidity here, yeah. and come into my order. And go, what has happened now? Break off structure again. Automatically, money has been transferred from here to this zone. Now, what am I looking at? This zone, of course. Does it correlate with my invalidation point? Yes, of course, it did. How? If you go to the line chart, you will know better. This was the last low. Then this was the last but one loop. Then I have my line there, my invalidation point. The price, so at least, you see guys, that was the last, last but one lower loop. So I would draw this guy up to this point, guys. We already know from the higher perspective of uptrend, right? That's clear, isn't it? That explains the higher perspective of uptrend, it's clear. Because of what we are seeing, and I look at right now, the weekly time frame. I will analyze the monthly time frame. We are begin to see, okay, price never take away this uh, 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 high, which can make us understand that that was the monthly perspective of the higher high. Look at it, guys. Look at it here. This is one move. Don't be confused. This is one move. Just one move. Now, we're looking at having something like this. No matter the time it takes, I'm going to go back up. So there's so many inefficiencies here. You can see it here. So many, many inefficiencies here. Um, now I'm back to the one week time frame correlating structure. Now I want to do put positions and play intraday. And now, court report is also there for you to know. And court reports reveal this as well. So, 
I have this perceptive here because of this consolidation I'm having here, because consolidation lead to an aggressive break of structure. I will indeed shift. So I want to do this. Let me go back. Let me shift this up. All these are my stones. Let me take away this old one because money has been transferred. So this week here, that can correlate with my weekly. Good, all these are my zones. But you know, when you are dividing it, wisdom demands that you have this guy here, this guy here. Uh, that's what I call decisional entry point and extreme entry point. Uh, here, these two zones. Why? There's an inefficiency here. Price can come down. We don't control price, they do. There's an inefficiency here. Price can choose to bounce from here. They won't be wrong. They won't be wrong at all. That we this get type that trade breaker. This was a breaker because <laughs> this was a break of market structure to the downside, right? So we're expecting price to come down here to revive, but price didn't. Price just gave it a fake move and continue. So I just had that's the reason why I also marked that point out. So I remember Coach Fine taught you that it's it's a strong zone, it's a strong demand zone as well. So bigger picture perspective is in the uptrend, smaller picture perspective is in the downtrend. Now I want to do my intraday play. I go to the one day time frame. These are not the time frames we use in taking entry. These are just the time frame that give a perception of what we are doing. Now, from what we can see, was there a stop point here? Yes, of course, there was a stop point. Look at it, guys. Look at it, guys. It's not somehow the more you practice, the easier it comes, becomes for you to see. There was a stop point here. The stop points, did he go into a supply demand zone? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. He did. And there's a way I draw my OB. I will explain that in the GP. I don't just draw it conventionally. Uh, this is how I do my OB. You know, you have another block, it's actually a block, not a candle. It's made up of a sponsor candle and an institutional funded candle. Yes. For example, we have something like, you know, we said the last buy candle for the, the last buy candle before the sell move and the last sell candle for the buy move. Let's say we have something like this, guys. We have something like this. This was the last sell candle before this buy move. This is how I draw my other block. I pick the low of this last sell candle for the buy move and push it to the sponsor candle. This was a sponsor candle. It's called sponsor candle. It sponsored this move. This is called it's Shana funded candle because this was the candle they placed a lot of money on. So money is in. So this this all together becomes an order block. So this is how I, I, I draw my uh, uh, supply demand zone. Yes, this is how I draw my supply demand zone. Like what you see me just do here. Now you see this black candle before this move. You see I picked everything, and this price came into it. So we also showed that here was valid. Sorry, please, can you uh, zoom a little bit? I can't seem to see the candle you're talking about. Sorry, sir. This candle, you see this candle here? This candle here? Okay. This particular candle here, like, not this yeah. black, I mean yeah. this, this guy, this guy. The blue candle. What, blue candle. Yes, yes. There's what we call, there's what we call, there's what is called, uh, uh, Pivot, pivot zone and uh, uh, range zone. Uh, most of the time, it focuses on the pivot zone and forgets and, and forget the range zone. Range zone is your normal supply demand technique. This this was a drop. A bit. Look at this. Sorry, this was a rally base and a drop, right? Yeah. Good. A rally. We had our base. Sorry, we had our base. We have our base here. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Then, then we have a drop, right? So yeah, it's a supply demand zone. And how do I know that as well? Look at there was a stop point. Stop pointing these guys. Huh? Mm -hmm. Stop pointing these guys. Now came aggressively and break structure to the downside. 
in as much as I'm I'm here, in as much as I'm I'm here, that I'm also in this zone as well. Because it's it's all about zone to zone. Now this is a five watt supply demand zone. I just marked it out. Look at it. This was a rally, a base, and a drop. Did it cause any stop point? Yes, of course it did. It took away this old high. If I don't see it, there's no need for it. Liquidity must be filled into it. Command my lines, please. But you know what I'm trying to do here? This guy is high here. Mm -hmm. This. Uh, good. This old higher got taken now uh, aggressively broke structure. So, and now another uh, sweet part of it is that it has also in. Yeah. Let's not forget this is the daily in this liquidity here. Now I'm going to do something here now. Mark our first range here to here. Don't worry, we'll just take away the color, make it red. Make it big. First range is that clear? This is the first. This is the first. This is the first range now. This is the first range now. Now this is the second range. This guy now is the second range. Yeah. Are you getting it now? So now pay attention to the one closest to us because if you look at you, know, I believe most of you. Or oh, all of us marked out this zone that you EU is going to reverse from here. How many of us marked out this zone? I did. How many of you marked out this zone? So many of us did. So many of us did. I did. I was one of the persons who did. Let me just make it uh, like this huge. So many of us did. And if you look at it, there was an other block here. Eh? that gave a supposed order block for price to return, but price didn't. Instead, somehow, somehow, price give, gave a breaker that was indeed actually respected to come down. So this zone to me, I will pay attention to it. And if you choose to feel for the type that I use feel, I don't use that all the time, because I just use my height to mark my zone. You discover that, guys. Oh my God. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. Discover that, guys. Look at your fib. My fib around where this OB is is in 78.6. Can you see it? 78.6. My fib. So I'm just waiting for price to come to this zone. And what you must know is that. Price must not necessarily come and eat your order block. I used to make that mistake, but I've stopped it. No. As long as price, see, I majorly trade Quasimodo. As long as price has taken out this liquidity and in smaller time frame, there's a shift of market structure and it returns to origin, I sell. Still have my SL in my supposed place. On that time frame now. So now this is the daily bias. Then I switch to the four hour and see what we have in the four hour. You can see that is a whole lot. Are you seeing it? Is a whole lot. Is a whole lot. For me, I for one, I trust this zone. But if it's too hard to do, I don't set limits. For you guys, I set limits. If it works for you, no problem. You can keep doing it. But for me, I don't set limits. I, I can I, I stay to take a trade on my computer, then leave it, then monitor it on my phone, then set a limit and say to get there, I want to do one sniper entry. No, no, I, I'm no longer in that business. I'm not, I'm not. So now I want price. The only price that will enable me to take this trade now is price move up. But before it does that, price will still come down. Because now I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for to buy this price here. Because now structural point here has been broken. That, that would be a short buy. Structural point here has been broken. Liquidity has been induced. Look at my dollar sign here. 
increase I do my top down analysis, liquidity has been induced this low. So just one price to come into this other block and see a shift of market structure, a smaller time frame. It's more, can you see it, guys? This is that zone we marked now. Liquidity was taken out. It was taken. It was taken. It was an aggressive push. It's only the way you also know that your OB will hold. And this thing was to the left, to the left side. It came into a demand zone and pushed aggressively by this engulfing candle. Now it has induced liquidity here. All, all these to me are liquidity. The, Need to be smart, they need to be taken out. So I'm not really much concerned about this move. It's not really my business. I just want, I would prefer to sell than to buy. But now we have not forgotten. All these are just intraday play. We still have our bigger perspective in mind, which is the weekly, the monthly, the daily. Let's not what we see in the uh, short time perspective deceives us. And one thing you must also get to know is that, you see this point I'm waiting for now, here is my extreme. Here is my extreme. I also have another OB, which is my decisional OB here. Why, why am I choosing here? I'm choosing this zone because of the aggressive break of this structure, liquidity inducement trap, and I had a stop point, guys. This was the stop point. Look at it here. Are you seeing it? Am I making sense, guys? Am I making sense? Yeah. So that is how I do my top down. Monthly, I want to know what the monthly perspective is. I have a note, I'll write it down. My weekly, I want to know the perspective that the weekly is. I'll write it down as well. Then my four hour, I want to know the structural points, so my four hour will determine my intraday play. Then my one hour downwards, I will start looking for an entry. So that's why I do my top down analysis. Yeah. Perfect. Um, any more questions, guys? For those asking for this support at not line, I will send it to the group. It's just, it's an indicator. It just shows, look at this now, guys. This was the resistance that was broken, right? It was broken. So your retail traders that said stop loss, uh, what they call it, is it buy order? I, I, buy order? Like they will set a buy stop. Yes, it's called a buy stop. They'll set a buy stop here. here. Or wherever they want to have it. So look at what they did. When I see this, I will just laugh. Oh, the weak thing. They will still, and they, still they will still come up. Oh. They've weak them out. Like they've given them hope. It's going into profit. And look at what they did. They dropped it. They dropped it. These guys don't have joy. They dropped it. And I can see efficient pricing. And now, as long as I'm not going to see anything like, if this guy do this now and go up, go up, then come down. Trust me, guys, I will be looking for an entry. You know, I look for an entry because of this guy. Why? Did this top point? Yes, of course, it did. Come in. This guy, his zone. Did this top point? Yes, of course. This top point. There was this top point. I'll show you now. Look at it, guys. It took out this previous low. So it's a strong low. Did it break structure? Of course it did. Broke structure. Now it's not feeding me with liquidity to make people to start buying. They reverse it back on their stop losses. Then that's when I want to take my trade. So where I'm going. I don't know if I've if I've just if I've taught someone this morning, but I don't know. But surprises, that's all. 
Well, um, to me, spot on. Spot on. I'm going to end the recording now, and then we can have a little chat in the background, guys. It's not everything that I need on the recording bit. But yeah. Let me make it your host.